Chinese study is projecting an alarming rise in cancer cases and deaths among men worldwide. According to a study recently published in the medical journal Cancer, cancer cases among men are projected to increase by 84% by 2050, with the amount of deaths increasing by 93%. Cancer deaths are estimated to grow from 5.4 million to 10.5 million, with an increase of nearly double among men aged 65 years and older. The Canadian Cancer Society estimates that in 2024, over 127,000 men and 120,000 females will be diagnosed with cancer. Prostate cancer is expected to account for around one-fifth of all new cancer cases in males. Joining us now to unpack this further is Dr. Abhishek Rout, Medical Director at Apple Tree Medical Group. Dr. Rout, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Now, let's start by discussing exactly why more cancer cases are expected to be diagnosed in men than in women. Is this due to certain types of cancer being more common than others, or are there just additional factors? Uh, I think it's probably a combination here. We do know that certain types of cancer are more common in men. Prostate cancer, of course, is the most common cancer amongst men, uh, which significantly contributes to that disbalance. Uh, we also have lung cancer. Historically, men have had higher smoking rates uh, than women, leading to a very high incidence of lung cancer as well. Colorectal cancer is also a type that's more prevalent in men, and there may be a lot of different factors associated with that. But yes, there are additional factors. There are lifestyle choices, there's occupational hazards, there's biological differences, and also healthcare utilization that definitely can cause some issues with men being diagnosed more often than women. Now, studies done in 2020 and 2021 revealed that men are faced with a higher death rate compared to women. What are some of the reasons behind this? Well, I think we see some biological factors here. Uh, there's hormonal differences. Men have lower levels of estrogen. And estrogen has had quite protective effects against certain diseases, especially cardiovascular diseases. Uh, there's genetic factors as well. Men are more likely to suffer from conditions like hemophilia or Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, there are also behavioral factors. Men tend to visit healthcare providers less regularly. Uh, and from social and environmental factors, certainly there's mental health pieces and occupational hazards that men tend to have uh, more in correlation to women. Now, the study also states that men have more cancer cases linked to occupational carcinogens than women do. Can you expand on that for us? Yeah, I mean, if we look at can Canada specifically, certainly about 5% of all of our cancer deaths come from occupational uh, hazards. Uh, and what we do see when we look at the differences between men and women, uh, certain cancers linked to asbestos, which we see in construction and manufacturing, or silica dust, which we see in mining and construction, can certainly see that more in uh, men than women. Uh, there's diesel engine exhaust, uh, which we'll see in trucking, construction, and railroads and a lot of industrial chemicals as well. Uh, so because of this occupational distribution where men are more likely to work in these industries, uh, along with the duration of the exposure, men are more likely to have longer careers in these high-risk occupations, we certainly would see that increase more in men than women. Now, what programs does Canada have in place for early detection and intervention of cancer? Are there more programs for female-specific cancers than male ones? Well, we do have uh, quite a few different cancer programs. So there's the colorectal cancer screening, uh, which uh, in this case is the FOBT or FIT tests or colonoscopies. Uh, we do have a lung cancer screening program where we target high risk populations. So those who have smoked for long periods of time will do a low dose CT to look for cancers. Uh, for men specifically, there's also prostate cancer screening, which we do for PSA. Uh, for uh, women, we use breast cancer screening, such as mammography, which is very helpful in detecting breast cancer early on, and cervical cancer screening, such as the PAP test and HPV testing as well. And what is your current opinion on Canada's current infrastructure uh, for cancer diagnosis and treatment? Do you believe that it will be enough to face the rising number of cases? So I think this is interesting because we do have a lot of strengths. We have a comprehensive cancer control strategy that we use. Uh, we do have advanced screening programs, uh, but there's a lot that we're going to need to improve to, to face this onslaught as well. We have a rising incidence of cancers and other diseases and an aging population, uh, and we still have a lot of equity access there. There's disparities in access to healthcare when we look at around different groups like Indigenous communities as well. Uh, so certainly there's a lot of advantages that Canada has to, to uh, overcome, but certainly areas that we do need to work on as well. Dr. Rout, thank you so much for joining us today. 
Thanks so much for having me.